Thank you, Commencement Choir. Our second speaker this afternoon is Blake Geyser. Blake is the son of Rocky and Carmi Geyser. Blake has participated in football, track, and baseball. He was a member of the Student Advisory Board his freshman and sophomore years, National Honor Society, a junior class officer, and also a Hugh O'Brien Youth Leadership alum. Blake will be attending UNK this fall and studying mortuary science. His speech is entitled, The Dash of Our Lives. I'm sweating like a fat kid giving a graduation speech. Ha ha ha. <laughs> it's funny because I'm fat. I know some of you are really nervous right now. Mr. Matson. Because I'm giving the graduation speech. So I'll loosen you up with some jokes. The other day I was at a baseball game and I was wondering to myself, why do baseballs get bigger the closer they get? And then it hit me. In high school, I was going to join the debate team. Then someone talked me out of it. My father is a man of few words. This morning, as he gave me my graduation gift, he said, Here. My aunt used to say, Slow and steady wins the race. She died in the fire. I'm just kidding. She was crushed by a piano. The funeral was low key. And on that note, I will start my speech. Hello, my name is Blake Geyser, and I will be the entertainment for the afternoon. Uh, I just want to say real quick, thank you all for coming to Kearney, Nebraska, the Windy City, the Big Apple, Sin City, the land of 10,000 lakes, the Show Me State, nailed it. I would like to welcome you all to this most joyous occasion, the graduation of the class of 2011. Before I start my speech, I would like to say thank you to the school board, the superintendent, Dr. Maher, all of the parents, the academic adjudicators, and most of all, I'd like to send a thank you to my classmates. Without them, I would not be the man I am standing before you here today. Without their friendships, life would have no flavor. Without the wonderful memories we created together and will always cherish, my existence would have no significance. The people of Carney High School have molded me into a true gentleman. From time to time, we will all look back on these days and realize they were some of the greatest moments of our lives. Parents, family, and educators, you are all witnessing the commencement ceremony of the greatest class to have walked the halls of Carney High School. I'm not joking. The class of 2011 will be our future senators, congressmen, medical doctors, CEOs, and Walmart greeters. This class will be the leaders of not only America, but also the leaders of the world, for they will do so in a career path they might take. Our class will be the most successful, not based on how far we run or the millions we make, but in our honor, integrity, and service to others. Most people will spend their entire lives trying to find a place and purpose. There will be nothing more than a leaf floating in the breeze. They have no idea how they will finish life. One thing is for certain, they will never live life to the fullest. Classmates, I dare you to be different and to be more than just a tumbleweed. 
Being alive does not mean you're just living, and so many people never live even though they're alive. Remember that life is a journey. Everyone has dealt a certain hand in life, but it's how he or she plays that hand that matters. For us to continue to grow and develop, we must choose our actions wisely and help others along their journey. Everything we do should lead us one step closer to our own purpose in life. To succeed in life and conquer our destiny, we must all realize that we need to begin at the end. Know where you want to finish life so you can begin your journey. Neither a journey or a life without a destination has any purpose. Begin with the end in mind. In the words of the Rolling Stones, you can't always get what you want. This is very true. I am chock full of personal anecdotes of times where I did not get what I desired at a particular moment in time. Like the time Caitlin Christensen didn't invite me to her Halloween party. We all have those memories. Isn't that right, Dr. Gostel? But it's what we do in the face of the serious situation that defines who we are. Everyone needs to ask themselves right now, what would I do if facing an incomparable foe? What should you do? All I can tell you that the answer to defeating this foe is total uncertainty. Uncertainty means nothing more than the infinite number of possibilities. Your choices are unlimited, but to know the right one and to act is divine. And that, that answer, lies within oneself. You will need to know who you are inside, a coward or a conqueror of all problems, whether they be internal or physical. The hard part is looking deep within, but the easy part is taking action. Our actions are nothing more than a reflection of who we are. Know this. Problems and crises are nothing more than learning opportunities. It's just an opportunity to learn who we are and where we are going. With every tribulation, we come closer to discovering who we truly are. Trials and tribulations will never keep us from success because success is not a destination, but a continuous journey. So label your problems as opportunities. Always fight for what is righteous and noble while defending your morals and character at all costs. For it is this, that is, what will matter most in the end. Know that making the most of the cards you are dealt is far more honorable than to have folded with the same hand. Never give up. Never run away. As an American. As a fair cat. You are trained to stand your ground. Defend yourself and forge ahead. Obstacles you may face may change the route to your final destination, but cannot change the destination. Your goals will be your map and your morals shall be your compass. So you'll never get lost. And if you find yourselves in uncharted waters, just remember to look within, and there will lie your compass and map. Oliver Wendell Holmes once stated, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Begin with the end in mind. Picture your funeral, a very somber scene but perhaps one of most importance. Everyone is standing around your grave. What do they feel? Joy? Or sorrow for the recent loss? Are they saying wonderful things about you and your character? Did you make a positive difference, a positive impact on the world? Or are they condemning you and your past actions? Look at what is written on the headstone. Does it say just rest in peace? Or does it state, here lies the greatest man or woman to have walked the earth? Finally, look at the dash in between the two dates. There's an old saying among the wise, the two dates on the headstone hold no value or importance. But it is the dash in between the two dates.
the day you enter this world and the day you exit have no significance on the human race whatsoever. What does matter to the world is what you do with your life. This visualization shall guide you to realize what needs to be done with your life. Use your time wisely because you are on earth for only a brief moment in time. To create or express anything that will nurture and better humanity's existence is honorable. Be a part of something greater that will serve and benefit others. Never be afraid to fail. Failure allows us to grow and develop. Our growth and development is directly related to the gifts we give to others. Whether it be helping a family in need, or just a smile to, to someone who's having a bad day. The greatest gifts cannot be touched or unwrapped, but instead can only be felt by the heart. We are all individuals, unique, unlike any other person here on earth. But we all have one thing in common. We all have the exact same purpose in life. That purpose is to fulfill the meaning of life. I will tell you the meaning of life. The meaning of life is the expansion of happiness. The only way to fulfill this meaning is through the service to others. It cannot be fulfilled through serving oneself. It has to be through serving others. This should be our final goal we've been talking about. Our final destination. Expanding happiness to others that's what it all comes down to. How do you go about expanding happiness to others? Well, that's for you to find out. I know some of you are thinking right now this is possibly a sad moment because we might never see one another again. Well, when you think about it like that, it's not so bad. It just means we're pursuing our goals in life and they cannot be replicated by anyone else. And the crossing of paths will not happen because we are living our own lives. Now I have a challenge to every person in the class of 2011. Be the best at whatever you do. Truly live life and appreciate every single moment. Now go forth and make the world a better place. In the words of Julius Caesar, Vini Vidi Vici, I came, I saw, I conquered. And also in the wise words of Sir Walter Bearcat, the founder of Carney High School, it's okay to crack your knuckles, but don't knuckle your crack. Thank you everyone, congratulations to the class of 2011. Go Bearcats! Thank you, Blake. <laughs>